Hello and welcome to today's math lesson. So first of all guys, can we all turn to wave and say a big hello to our friends on camera? Hello. And we'll begin by doing our meditation sequence. So I will sit down, take two fingers, find our heart center, left hand on our laps and close our eyes. Excellent guys, and when you're ready, you can open your eyes and come back to the room. Next, we'll do our stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And we'll begin by stretching up high to the sky. As high as we can. And then we'll go down low to touch our toes. up high one more time and this time can we go tippy toe high and while we're there let's have a wave side to side and then back down to touch our toes again and now hands on hips and we can have a wiggle side to side Stop. And now another wiggle side to side. Stop. Forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, and stop. And now we can go round and round. Round and round. And stop. And then back the other way. Round and round the other way. And stop. And to finish, we will do five claps. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent, guys. Have a seat. So who can tell me what we began learning about in math class last time? Remember when we were looking at parts of a whole? What do we call a part of a whole? Beginning with F. Fractions. fractions. We began learning about fractions. So let's write that word on the board. F R A C T I O N S. Fractions. Yes, and there were three different types of fractions that we learnt about in our introduction lesson. The first type of fraction we learnt about was called a Proper fraction. fraction. Yes. And what a proper fraction is, is when the top number is smaller than the larger number. Now this fraction here is a proper fraction two-thirds or two over three. Because if we draw a circle, 
what we need to do is we need to divide the circle into three parts, like this. So we have three parts, which is represented here by the denominator, and then the numbers or the segments in blue represent the fraction 2 over 3. And this is what we call together, guys, proper fraction. And then the next one we learnt about, improper fraction. I, M, P, R, O, P, E, R. Improper. Now what improper means is when the top number, the numerator, is larger than the denominator. For example, we could have 5 over 3. Now here you can see we've got 5 parts, but only 3 is the whole. So what this means is that we would have one circle in 3 parts like this. And all of them will be blue. So at the moment, that represents 1, 2, 3, over 3. So what we need for an improper fraction is two more parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the actual number of fractions is larger than the whole. And this is what we mean by improper fraction. Notice the difference, guys. Proper, the numerator is smaller than the denominator. But improper, the denominator is larger than, oh, sorry, the numerator is larger than the denominator. And then the final thing we learnt about mixed numbers. M, I, X, E, D. And numbers, M, U, B, E, R, S. Now a mixed number is a combination of a total number, such as 2, and then a fraction, like 2 thirds. So here, the mixed number is 2, and two-thirds. So what that means is, for the whole, the two, we would have one, two. Complete wholes. No fraction, so we've got two whole numbers. But then, the fraction is how many? Two over three. So the fraction needs to be two-thirds. So we have our thirds. So how many segments, guys, of our fraction needs to be blue in 2 over 3? 2. Excellent. Well done. So here we can say that with a mixed number, the total amount of the fraction in blue, 1, 2, and then 2 thirds or 2 over 3. And this is what we mean by mixed numbers. So that was excellent guys, very well remembered. And what we're going to do in today's lesson is we're going to concentrate on the first type of fraction that we learnt about in the introduction. Today's lesson we're going to concentrate on proper fractions. And remember that is when the numerator is smaller than the denominator. These are the most common fractions and the easiest to understand. So what we've got now is a PowerPoint presentation for our students to observe, listen to, and also practice speaking the facts about proper fractions. So let's turn to look at the TV screen, guys. So let's take a look at our PowerPoint presentation about proper fractions. And remember, guys, a proper fraction is when the numerator, the top number, is smaller than the bottom number, denominator. Here you can see one whole. 
there is only one part to this bar. So that's not a fraction. But then when we cut the bar into two, one half. You can see each side represents one half or one over two. And how about the next? What do we think we call it if we cut the bar into three? Any ideas? One over three, correct. Or one third. And then we can go down the list until we come to here. Now there are six different parts to the bar. What does each fraction represent? One over six. Or one sixth. A fraction is a number that represents part of a whole. The numbers represent the different fractions of the circle. The number at the top of the fraction is known as the numerator. Yes, so remember guys, this number at the top is always the numerator. Now what does this fraction here, what does this part represent? One over four, one over four. correct. Or one quarter. Now looking at the remainder of the pie, or the circle, how many parts? Three. So what does this fraction represent? Three over four, or three quarters. The number at the bottom of the fraction is known as the denominator. Yes. And the denominator in a proper fraction will always be the total number of parts. And as you can see here, the denominator is the same because the number of parts is the same. How many numbers of parts do we have? Four. We have four different quarters. One plus three equals four. The coloured parts of each shape here represent one third or one over three. Yes, each coloured part of the shape, whether it be a circle, a triangle, or the bar, the rectangle, you can see that each coloured part represents one segment. So even though they're different shapes, the fraction remains the same. It's one over three, or one third. Now how about this one? Not one over three anymore, what do we have? One over four. One over four. You see? Each shape now has four different parts. So that's the denominator. Mm -hmm. And each coloured part represents how many parts? One. So we can say the coloured parts of each shape here represent one quarter or one over four. Yes. A proper fraction has a smaller numerator than the denominator. Yes, proper fractions, the top number always smaller than the bottom one. Who can have a guess? What fraction can we see written here? Correct. Three over five. Or we can say three-fifths. Now, quiz time. Look at the red pieces of the circle, guys, and who can tell me what fraction does the red segment of pi represent? 
Any ideas? See, don't make the mistake of just counting red and white. Correct. First of all, what we need to do is count the total number of segments. That's our denominator. Then look at the parts in red. So one more time. Correct. Well done, guys. Well worked out. Three red parts and the total parts, seven. You see? Three sevenths or three over seven. Next one. Now, look carefully. We're looking what fraction does the yellow segment of pi represent? Now, well, first thing to do, count the total number of segments. One over five. Yes. Total number of segments, five. Then count the number of segments in yellow. One. So what's our answer? One over five. Or one-fifth. You see? The denominator, one, two, three four, five. And then we want to know how many are in yellow. One. So one-fifth. Now guys, back to this one. Now look carefully. What fraction does the white segment of pi represent? Correct. You see? The red part is three. And the white parts are four. But all together, there are seven parts. So we can say four sevenths or four over seven. Yes, and these are what we call proper fractions because the numerator, the top number, is always smaller than the bottom number. Any questions, guys? That was excellent. Well done. <laughs> Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the PowerPoint presentation about proper fractions, which is the type of fractions we're concentrating on today. Remember, the top number, the numerator, will always be smaller than the bottom number, the denominator, in a proper fraction. And coming up, we've got a flashcards exercise for our students to practice drawing proper fractions on their own. Well, first of all, time for our stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs, guys. Okay, so for this stretch sequence, we'll begin with some stretches. Let's do five to our right. One, two, three, Four, five, and then to our left, one, two, three, four, five. Excellent, guys. And now we'll do some rotations. So let's go left, right, left. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Excellent. And now let's have a little shake. Arms and legs, shake it out. Shake it out. And now we can take our right hand and we can find our left foot. Then left hand, right foot. Right hand, left foot, left hand, right foot, right hand, left foot, left hand, right foot, right hand, left foot, left hand, right foot. And to finish, guys, this time we're going to do five start-ups. One, two, three, 
four, five. Excellent, guys. Have a seat. So now it's time for our flashcard part of the lesson. So teachers, what you need to do in preparation is print out the flashcards for this lesson and then all the individual fractions cut into individual pieces of paper. Then what you need to do is fold them and place them into a bowl or tray similar to this. Then what we're going to do is we're going to draw a circle on the board, have our student pick out the fraction and our students will have to design the circle based on the fraction that they have. So we need our first student to come forward. Pak Bung, come and join me at the front. So Pak Bung will choose the first fraction. Just one, please. Okay, and show it to your friends. Okay, guys, so what's our fraction? Four over eight. Four over eight, correct. Or we can say four eighths. So what I'm going to do first of all, I'm going to draw the circle for Pak Bung. And now I'm going to give Pak Bung a blue marker. First of all, Pak Bung needs to draw eight parts to the circle. And then I would like to see four parts in blue. So Pak Bung, over to you. So we've got two parts, four parts, six parts, eight parts. That's okay, don't worry, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then you need your line to come here. Okay, so is Pak Bung correct? Let's count the number of parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Excellent. So Pak Bung, you can write your denominator. You've got the right number of parts, eight. And then you can do your line on top for the fraction. Now, how many parts do we need in blue, guys? We need four. So, Pak Bung, can we see four parts in blue? And don't worry, you don't have to colour completely, just do shades for the line. So, one part. Excellent. So now we can count the number of coloured blue parts. One, two, three, four. So now, Pak Bung, can you write your numerator at the top? Is Pak Bung correct? She certainly is. We've got eight parts to our pie or circle. And how many parts do we have in blue? Four eighths. But what does anybody else notice? How many parts? Eight. How many parts in blue? Four. So another way to write this fraction, we could also say one over two, because exactly half of the pie is in blue. We've got one half in blue of two equal parts. So four eighths is the same as one over two, one half. And these are how we do proper fractions. Pak Bung, that was excellent. High five and a big round of applause for Pak Bung, guys. So teachers, you can see the activity that we're doing in our classroom now. You can pause the video and play on with your own students for the next 10 to 12 minutes. And remember, each time, use a different student to select a different fraction from the flashcards and then we can practice together. And now I need my next student. But first of all, I need to clean the board. Okay, so now the board's ready. And I need my next student, Lak Gao. Come and join me at the front of class. So there you go, Lak Gao. Can you pick it and show it to your friends? Three. Over 10. Okay, so let's see. First of all, we need our pie or our circle. 
There you go, Lackow. There's our circle. And now Lackow will demonstrate how to design the fraction 3 over 10, or 3 tenths. So Lackow, that's for you. So first of all, we need 10 parts. So half, half again. And then we can divide them in excellent. Okay, now let's stop for one moment. How many parts do we have now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that means we need another line here. Going right the way through. How many parts do we have now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So is Lakau right with the number of parts? Yes. She is. So Lakau, you can write your denominator ten. So we can do ten, and then a line on top. Excellent. And now, how many parts do we need in blue? Three. That's one. Two. Excellent. Okay. So is Lakau correct? How many parts in blue? How many total parts? So what's our fraction? Three over ten. Or three tenths. And this is another example of a proper fraction. Lakau, that was brilliant. High five. Big round of applause for Lakau, please, guys. Okay, it's now time for our next student. But first of all, I'll clean the board. Okay, so now it's Nadia's turn. Nadia, come and join me at the front, please. And then choose your fraction. Show it to your friends. One over, three. one over three. Or we can say one third. So Nadia needs to do the circle based on this fraction. So there you go, Nadia. There's your circle. And what Nadia needs to do now is demonstrate the fraction one over three. So how many parts to our circle? Three parts. One. Oh. There you go. And then you've got three equal parts. How many parts to our circle do we have? Three. So, Nadia, you can write your denominator three. Perfect. Now, how many parts do we need in blue? One. Brilliant, Nadia. So now you can write your numerator, one. Excellent. So what's Nadia's fraction now? One over three, because we can see that one part of three is in blue. So one over three, or one third. Can you say one third? Perfect, Nadia. Very well done. High five, and a big round of applause for Nadia, guys. Okay, now time for one more student. But first of all, I need to clean the board again. Okay, and this time I would like to invite student down. Come and join me at the front. And show it to your friends. What's our fraction, guys? Two over five. Two over five. Okay. So now Dan will demonstrate the fraction. Two over five. So first of all, how many parts do we need to our circle? Five. Five. That's two. That's four. 
Excellent. So now, how many parts to our circle? Five. five. So down, you can write our denominator, the number five. Perfect. Now, how many parts do we need in blue? Two. Okay. So next, we go with two parts in blue. One. Two. Excellent. Is that correct? Yes, it certainly is, because Dan has correctly demonstrated one, two, three, four, five parts for our denominator and two parts in blue. So our fraction is two over five or two fifths. Can you say that? Two fifths? Or two over five. Perfect. Very well done. Big round of applause for Dan, please, guys. And a big round of applause for everyone doing a great job. And now it's time for our worksheet part of the lesson. So teachers, make sure every student in your class gets their own worksheet. And similar to the flashcards exercise, we've got a list of fractions Four in total that are all different. And what our students need to do is demonstrate their understanding by designing and colouring the fractions based on the numbers they are asked to. So give our students around 10 to 12 minutes for this activity and just monitor the class, help them with anything they need. But what's the first thing to do, guys? Names on top. And then work your way through the different fractions and remember to use colouring pencils, guys. And a different colour for each fraction would look good. Pack boom for you. Pat, for you. there's yours. Chu, there's yours. Down for you. Prow, there's yours. Bang bun for you. And lack out. So, guys, four different fractions. And I'd like to see four different colours. Okay? You can choose the colours you want. But for each one, use a different colour, because that way your worksheets will look prettier. And if you need any help, let me know. I can demonstrate on the board. The first one, 1 over 2, which is 1 half. So you need to design your circle into two parts and colour 1 half the colour that you want. That represents 1 half. then be careful, some of the fractions get bigger. Well done, Nadia. Yep, that's a good idea. If you want to do the fractions all together, one after the other, and then you can colour in afterwards. Or you can do one at a time. It's up to you. And don't forget your names on top, guys. Perfect. So there you go, Proud Number one, half of your circle is green. And that represents the fraction one over two. And you'll notice there are proper fractions. The numerator on top is smaller than the denominator at the bottom. Well done, Pak Bung. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so you've got your ten parts. Now how many need to be in your colour? Six. Which is six over ten. So let's see, what have we got? One over two. Over 
five. Five over eight. Excellent. You see, the number on top is the numbers in colour, and then the bottom is the total number. Well done, Michael. Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the worksheet exercise where they had to read the different fractions and then design their circles and colour them based on the fractions that are given. And my students here all did an excellent job, so well done, guys. And that's all we've got time for today. So now we hope you understand more about proper fractions and how the numerator, the number at the top, is always smaller than the denominator, the number at the bottom. And we'll see you again soon for the next lesson. So can we turn to wave and say goodbye, guys? Bye-bye. See you again soon.